Welcome to the 76th edition of the Criterium de Dauphiné, the traditional Tour de France tune-up serving up 1,200 kilometres of intense racing. A major crash at the Basque Tour means the Dauphiné has come too soon for reigning champion Jonas Vinogar. Two other stars, equally caught up in that crash in early April, have made it to the start line. A return to the road will provide a first indication of form heading into the Tour in four weeks' time. C'est idéal pour, euh, pour reprendre le rythme et pour, euh, pour remettre un peu les, les sensations dans le peloton. Donc euh, j'espère de, de passer l'étape sans problème et de, de bien arriver avec, euh, dans le groupe. Pour moi, je juste besoin de être dans une race situation avec les gars. Je veux dire, nous avons une race avec eux depuis des années. J'ai juste quelques jours. Donc oui, collecter ces jours est crucial pour moi. Visma and Lisa Bike may be missing their star man, but they still have two leading men. Welter champion Sepp Kuss alongside the man who captured the Paris-Nice title, Matteo Jorgensen. We both go for GC, Sepp and I. Um, we have different characteristics, obviously, so it'll be, I think, a nice... Uh, yeah, it'll be good for us both to go for GC because we both have different strengths, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Starting and finishing in 100% sur Seoul, a few small ascents in the first 50 kilometers offers the first points of the week in the King of the Mountain category. Then a sprint bonus available just shy of the halfway point as the course flattens out. After 172 and a half kilometers, a loop around the finish expected to produce a bunch sprint. A rare chance for the speedsters like Sam Bennett and Maz Pedersen to grab Dauphiné's stage success. The conditions less than ideal on the first day of the Dauphiné, rain replacing the heat wave June normally provides in France. Mark Donovan made an early move, eventually joined by Matisse Lebert. Donovan impressed in last year's Tour of Britain, the Englishman's fifth overall and third in the King of the Mountains category. And the 25-year-old's hard graph rewarded here, maximum points to confirm the polka dot jersey at the end of the stage. The escapades building a four-minute lead, but the peloton started to move through the gears. Lidl Trek for Mads Pedersen and Decathlon AG2R for Sam Bennett working at the front, joined by Ineos Grenadiers, keeping their leader Carlos Rodriguez right at the front, well out of trouble. With 60 kilometers to go, the gap was closer to three minutes by the final circuit. Issues did begin to spring up, including for Decathlon AG2R. First a puncture for Bruno Amaray, then Sam Bennett forced into a wheel change. At the back, but still time to contest the finale. French side with 23 wins this season, the Irishman adding to that total with a dominant GC victory at the recent four days of Dunkirk, a tete-a-tete -tete with Pedersen, looking a safe bet. Lebert and Donovan crossed the line for the penultimate time, still in the lead, but by 16 kilometers to go, they were swallowed up. Meanwhile, nerves certainly jangling ahead of the finish. Oh, crash at the back. Crash in the peloton. And a number of riders have gone down, including Stephen Kreiswijk. Most recovering, but James Wheeling of Q36.5 Pro Cycling did have to abandon. A bunch sprint likely, but with an unclassified hill before the end, any rider who made a successful break could go for the win and the lead of the race. One brave soul, Nils Pullet, but a break cover by Marco Haller of Bora Hansgrove. In the end, the peloton took up the whole width of the road as they headed for a bunch sprint to the line. Fred Wright is tucked in there for Bahrain victorious. He's going to try and sprint. One kilometre of racing to go on stage one of this Dauphiné. Four hours of racing has gone by. And now it's about who wins the stage. Moving up. Big sprint. Oh, and a little bit of a touch. Blake Quick is there for Jaco Alula. It's slightly downhill now at 70 kilometers an hour. Ryan Gibbons, left hand side. Uh, here comes Milan Menton on the right. Oh, and Leapins pulls his foot out for DSM Fermanek post NL. Bennett is there. He moves up. He's almost waiting on the wheel of Matt Pedersen. So it's Pedersen. Venturini's right on the wheel of Sam Bennett. Now the sprint starts. 67 kilometers an hour. Pedersen on the front. Here comes Bennett on the other side. Moving up. Pedersen takes it it was easy in the end there was never any question 
Pedersen perfectly placed and never going to lose it with that head start. The 28-year-old's previous adventure at this race in 2021 ended at stage 3 without making any impression. Three years later, the Dane secured his first ever Dauphiné stage win. Even if he failed to shine at Paris-Nice, Pedersen with an 8th success of the season and 7th in France. I, I like to, to race in France and uh, yeah, from, uh, from the small races to the big races it's always uh, well organized and, and nice racing so of course it's nice to, to keep winning. Pedersen back in action for the first time since Paris-Roubaix yet showing no cobwebs. Sam Bennett hung on for second place just holding off Hugo Page. Pedersen honoured with the first Maillot Jaune of this Dauphiné, the podium in place on the GC with the day's escapades making up the top five. Bennett will wear Pedersen's points jersey, the Irishman green with envy, nearly two years since his last World Tour win. Mark Donovan earning a slender advantage, but the king of the mountain fight will truly heat up from tomorrow. A first World Tour podium finish in 18 months makes Hugo Page the leading youngster ahead of the day's breakaway duo. A fairly regulation sprint stage, but that promises to be the last of the whole Dauphiné. The GC action kicking off tomorrow with the first of six uphill finishes. Some real damage could be inflicted in the final 20 kilometres up the Col de la Loge.